Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will show you a very beautiful denarius struck in BC62 by the Monetarius L. Emilius Lipidus Paulus. The coin is from my own coin cabinet. And as usual for the Republican coinage, the Monetarius used the opportunity to elevate himself through his ancestor and namesake, the consul Lucius Emilius Paulus, who defeated King Perseus of Macedonia at the Battle of Pydna in June 22nd in 168 BC. Prior to Emilius Paulus' arrival, only Perseus' persistent lack of military intelligence prevented the total rout of the Roman legions, as the prior consuls were inept and totally unworthy of the task. Emilius Paulus, however, was an experienced commander, having seen service in Hannibalic wars. Perseus then established himself in an unassailable position on the river Elphus in the northeastern Greece. To force Perseus from his position, Paulus sent a small force under the command of Publius Cornelius Scipio to the coast, a feint to convince Perseus that he was attempting a riverborne flanking maneuver. Instead, that night, Scipio took his force south and over the mountains to the west of the Roman and Macedonian armies. They moved as far as Pythion, then swung northeast to attack the Macedonians from the rear. A Roman deserter, however, made his way back to the Macedonian camp and Perseus sent a force under the command of Milo to block the approach road. The encounter that followed sent Milo and his men back in disarray towards the main Macedonian army. After this, Perseus moved his army northwards and took up his position near Keterani, a village south of Pydna. It was a fairly level plain and was very well suited to the phalanx. The night before the battle there was a lunar eclipse which was perceived by the Macedonians as an ill omen. According to Plutarch, they interpreted it as a sign of the king's demise. Meanwhile, Paulus is said to have understood that eclipses occurred at regular intervals but still believed it was necessary to perform sacrifices and wait for favorable omens. The Roman army consisted of between 28,000 to 37,000 men, of which 22 to 34,000 were infantry, Romans, Italians and allies from Greece, Numidia and Liguria, as well as possibly Hispania. The Macedonians had 43,000 soldiers at the start of the war, of which more than 20,000 were phalangites. The cavalry forces were roughly equal, up to 4,000 Macedonians and Thracians, against some 3,400 Romans and allies. The fighting began the afternoon of the next day, June 22. The two centers engaged at about 3 p.m., with the Macedonians advanced on the Romans a short distance from the Roman camp. Paulus claimed later that the sight of the phalanx filled him with alarm and amazement. The Roman allies tried to beat down the enemy pikes or hack off their points, but with little success. Roman allies' officers began to despair. But as the phalanx pushed forward, the ground became more uneven as it moved into the foothills, and the line lost its cohesion, being forced over the rough terrain. Paulus now ordered the legions into the gaps, attacking the phalangites and their exposed flanks. At close quarter, the longer Roman sword and heavy shield easily prevailed over the Macedonian copies and lighter shields of the Macedonians. They were soon joined by the Roman right, which had succeeded in routing the Macedonian left. Seeing the tide of the battle turn, Perseus fled with his cavalry on the Macedonian right. According to Plutarch, Perseus' cavalry had yet to engage, and both the king and his cavalry were accused of cowardice by the surviving infantry. The battle lasted about an hour, but the bloody pursuit lasted until nightfall. The battle is often considered to be a victory of the Roman legion's flexibility over the phalanx's inflexibility. Nevertheless, modern conclusions are that the loss was actually due to a failure of command on the part of Perseus. After Macedonia's defeat, Paulus conquered Epirus, laying waste numerous towns and taking as many as 150,000 prisoners to supply Rome's slave markets. For his magnificent conquest, the Senate awarded him the title Macedonicus, 
along with the splendid triumph. On the obverse of this beautiful denarius struck in Rome in 62 BC, Concordia is depicted and in the legend Paulus Lepidus Concordia. On the reverse, a military trophy is in the center and to the left three captives and to the right Lucius Emilius Paulus is standing dressed in toga. Above the trophy Ter and below Paulus. Ter is the abbreviation for Tertius and should be read as the third Paulus. This featured coin is just one example of how coins and medals act as storytellers or time machines, taking you on an exciting journey to bygone places and times. By learning more about the context, the coins become that much more interesting. At the moment, together with Italo Vecchi, I am writing a book on this very theme. The book is called Rome, the Legacy, and in the book we let the reverse sides of the coins tell episodes from the history of the Roman Empire. The first proof print of the book is ready, which I show at coin shows around the world where I participate. The book will be printed in 2024. I hope you find this video interesting and to help others with a historical and or numismatic interest, watch this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. It is free to subscribe and you don't commit to anything nor will you receive any unwanted emails or offers from me. And you can whenever you want end your subscription. By subscribing, liking and sharing you help YouTube's and Google's algorithms to rank up this video and thus make it easier for others with a similar interest to view this video. Also, make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified when I publish new video on YouTube. Thank you for watching.